looking at your work, and all, all three of you, I see that there's a very interesting common thread of humor in, in your works individually, that there are a lot of works in the exhibition that deal with, um, you know, very sort of subtle kind of, uh, of humor. Uh, I'm thinking like of Stuart Davis's egg beater painting, I'm thinking of the Calder sort of gong piece that the kids were trying to make move. Um, I'm thinking of, um, you know, even the work that you showed earlier, which was Raul Loza's sort of, right, sort of like festive that. kind of relief. And mm -hmm. it seems like humor, maybe not laughing out loud kind of humor, but humor is a device that each of you use. Um, I like to say that I highlight the comedy of our bodily functions. And my work deals <laughs> with the figure. I'm abstracting the figure. And um, for the Blackout exhibition, I, it's, it's really about the viewer coming into the belly of the painting, of one of the paintings. There are three in the exhibition, chunk paintings, that were uh, made site-specifically for uh, the installation. So once the installation was painted and installed with the playful cutout shapes, um, the, uh, the installation came alive when the paintings were installed. But it's, um, it's a work that's humorous, it's playful, kids come into the space, they uh, engage the um, uh, adults and every age group really kind of takes something from it and they either, you know, find something humorous about it because it is, it's, it's lighthearted work but it's still very sophisticated and, and layered and punctuated with all kinds of information in the installation. Mm -hmm. So I like to have fun with it. So, yeah, I mean, yes, the work I seems do. fun, so... <laughs> I'm treating this, I treated the space for the Blackout exhibition as a big, enormous canvas. So that in itself is kind of a playful way of seeing uh, architectural space or space and having a dialogue with space. So I felt like a, a kid uh, interacting with, with the space and working out the, uh, the diagrams and plans to create the installation, yeah. Blackout. And a lot of the color you're using too, the fluorescence, the sort of candy colors. I mean, they have real, kind of real references in. They're candy. Play, I mean, in, in candy, cases, yeah. uh, fashion, and, and things. People can recognize these colors, and I uh, juxtapose these colors with more of your uh, traditional um, uh, uh, primary colors. That makes the installation uh, interesting and sophisticated. So, so I do use those colors because it brings to mind. Um, you know, uh, candy and these color, these kind of, this kind of information. There was a security guard that, that approached me and said, you know, Paul, he goes, that yellow color there, it looks like my, when I was a kid, my grandmother's kitchen. And, you know, he chuckled and laughed and it just, you know, it just brings a lot of uh, humor. Uh, there's a lot of things and in, information in the work that people can gravitate to. So there is a lot of humor Got it. in the work. Okay. Yeah. And what about you, Lenora? De algum modo, eu tenho um forte esse lado do humor. Por exemplo, né, que aqui eu mostrei aquelas imagens, aquela sequência. I would like to say that yes, there's a, a, a very important touch of humor in my work as one of uh, the works that I show here, which it was uh, the images uh, as a tribute to George Siegel, which was one of my first works. Maybe that's a legacy from my father because my father had a very strong uh, humor side and that also would lead into his work. Uh, actually, uh, Mary Kate and I were talking yesterday and uh, one point that we touched upon was how to have humor within form, how to use form with humor. Certa vez, em, eh, na Bienal de Veneza, de 1986, eh, quando meu pai participou, Geraldo participou, representando o Brasil. Em 1986, em the biennial exhibit of uh, Veneza, onde meu pai, Geraldo, uh, was one of the artists. Eh, tinha um trabalho que era, eh, bom, enfim, era um hexágono branco, todo branco. One of the pieces of work was a hexagonal that was all in white. E havia um ponto, a dot, dot, in the middle, just in the middle. And there was a dot, yeah. a dot, Nós right in the middle, just right <coughs> in the middle. Nós pensávamos que estava no meio. Well, we thought it was right in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Daí, em alguns, logo que inaugurou, eu estava tendo coquetel, vernissagem e tal, estava abrindo a exposição. Within uh, the day of uh, the opening of the exhibition with all the cocktails, you know, and the party. E daí uh, meu pai, and, Geraldo, yeah, chamou, chamou meu marido e falou assim. Whispered to him where everybody, well, everyone here thinks that that dot is right in the middle, but I moved it a little bit, like three millimeters to one side. <laughs> Don, how about, how about humor in your work? In my, um, the paint, like the paintings that you saw, um, Sometimes when I'm working on them, I'll chuckle as I combine something or... But they're like little formalist in-jokes and I don't really expect that to sort of translate to uh, a viewer necessarily. Um, and, uh, I do try to get humor in some of the, into the work by uh, some of the titles. Um, um, I had called a uh, triptych that I'd done some years ago, uh, Can't Understand It, and then uh, Devin Golden used it as an introduction to whenever he would give a uh, lecture to like a, uh, a corporate group or something, you know, it was like his way of uh, breaking the ice. And uh, I also have a, like a side project of uh, paintings that I do on styrofoam insulation boards. Uh, it's like the blue or the pink stuff that you use, you know, to insulate the walls in your house, and it always, never fails to, you know, bring a, a smile to their face. And especially if they get to hold one, it's, uh, it seems to break the, uh, the idea that something that's a serious kind of geometric image is uh, uh, really serious and, you know, you can't have fun with it. Uh, uh, it maybe it's because it's on such a, like, uh, something that's seen as such a quotidian material or so you know, light brain throwaway that uh, it just has this sort of viewer friendly appeal that mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting that the side project has its own reaction, even though like the imagery is the same, but uh, the feel of it is totally different and get a different response from people. And that styrofoam you were getting from, um, from sort of building materials, construction materials, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Lumber yards or Home Depot or sometimes I found some Uh, I, I'm looking for different colors, and like I found like a, a green chunk that was being thrown f away from a construction site. So, you know, I, I picked it up off the street and I did three or four pieces on that. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a kind of black styrofoam that I've seen. Uh, I've only gotten a couple of chunks on it. It's really dense, uh, but I I don't know who makes it or who's the supplier. But mm -hmm. I'm on the lookout for that. Interesting. Uh, Interesting.